the Expressions Program is one of those wonderful programs in which we bring scholars and researchers and community activists and politicians to come to campus and to discuss issues <coughs> that have global and regional significance. And tonight, the event that we're addressing, of course, deals with what's taking place here in the new district. So it should be a very, very exciting evening. And we are very proud to host this event. And uh, the person who will be conducting the process is Michael Krasny. And Michael Krasny, of course, is with KQED. And he is part of the Dominican family. He received not too long ago an honorary doctorate from Dominican University. So without further ado, I'm going to turn the mic over to Carol. And Carol's going to talk more specifically about the program. Thanks, Carol. Thank you. My name is Carol Mills, and I co-chair DFA, Democracy for America, Marin, with my colleague Pat Kunstenar. I want to thank the Dominican University and the Expressions Program for hosting us at this fabulous event, and also acknowledge our co-sponsors, Progressive Democrats of Marin and the 10th Assembly District Democratic Club. I also want to tell you that you, we are being live streamed, and if you're texting anybody, you, they can uh, see this on www.cmcm.tv backslash special. Forward slash, I'm sorry, forward slash. <laughs> how literate I am about computers. Um, hopefully you have gotten four by six cards as you were coming in uh, to write questions to the candidates on. If you didn't get one and would like one, raise your hand and someone will bring it to you. I see a couple people over here. Periodically throughout the discussion, people will be walking around picking the cards up. So if you see uh, either Blake or Evelyn back there who are waving at you, walking around, and you have a card for them, just hold it up and they'll come and get it from you. Um, I had planned to introduce each of the candidates with fabulous biographies of their many accomplishments, but as you can see, there are seven of them. And um, there are so many issues to discuss that what I'm going to do is simply introduce them. They all have campaign websites that are very easy to find, and there's literature at the back of the room if you would like some more in-depth information about them. The candidates are and I, uh, Marin County Supervisor Susan Adams, uh, Dr. William Courtney. Nope. Oh, there, I'm sorry, I missed you. Uh, Green candidate, Andy Caffrey, sorry. Uh, California State Assembly member, Jared Huffman. Businesswoman, Stacy Lawson. Petaluma City Council member, Tiffany Renee. And activist author, Norman Solomon. I want to thank you for the entire room for agreeing to participate tonight. Thank you so much. Uh, tonight's event is not a debate. It is a forum. It is a discussion of the pressing issues that we are facing today. And who better to moderate that discussion than the articulate, thoughtful, and thought-provoking Michael Krasny. Michael is an author, professor, host and senior editor of KQED's award-winning news and public affairs program, Forum. We are beyond thrilled that you agreed to participate, and it is my great pleasure to turn it over to you, Michael. Thank you all for being here, and thanks to Dominican for hosting it. It's true that um, I was uh, given an honorary doctor, which I'm very proud of. Although I once said that honorary doctorates come in one of two ways, either you give a lot of money or you do a lot in the community. And as you can see, I'm here tonight because I don't give a lot of money. Uh, I give what I can. And the fact that you're here says a good deal about your commitment. Uh, we have a new district, of course, and we have some really fine candidates. Uh, it's an embarrassment of riches in many ways. This seat is open, and it goes from the Golden Gate Bridge all the way up to the Oregon border. Um, now that you've been introduced to the candidates, I just want to make one quick uh, emendation, which may not seem important, but a number of years ago, I passed on the mantle of senior editor of Forum to Dan Zoll, and he is now senior editor, much to my pleasure and, uh, and appreciation. I thought I'd begin by, we, we were going to do this not necessarily, as Carol said, with candidates sparring or, or fighting or anything along those lines, but just having questions 
uh, thrown at them by me and also follow up. And I'm going to ask each of them to give responses of about two minutes apiece, two to three minutes apiece. And the first thing I'd like to do, and this is in lieu of, you know, this is who I am and this is what I stand for, I want to ask each of you to, uh, here, here's a hypothetical I'm going to put to you, and I'll begin, I'm sorry, you're the first in the alphabet, Susan, so we'll begin <laughs> with you. Uh, and then we'll come back and begin with Norman next, and then we'll mix it around. But here's the question. You are going to represent this district, you're going to Congress, and you're going to face some pretty formidable opposition, probably, uh, given the Tea Party and given certainly politics that are not necessarily in harmony with this county. You want to have one piece of legislation as a priority, a legislation, a piece of legislation that you believe you can really carry for this new district that would be even vital for this new district and realistically you think is viable. What would it be? <laughs> Andy Caffrey, can I go to you next? Well, <clears throat> I have more of an FDR approach as well, so I see it more as a combination of bills. I got involved, well, yeah, um, so what I'll tell you is the first bill that I would introduce is a ban on the use of tasers, pepper spray, and pain compliance on nonviolent protesters. But if you ask the most important one, it would be a new reconstruction that would redirect trillions of dollars back to our communities to build a post-fossil fuel, post-nuclear, sustainable society everywhere in the country designed around bioregions. That's the only way you can design a sustainable society is ecosystem by ecosystem. For 30 years I've been working on the climate issue. For 30 years I've been working on trying to get people to understand the ecotopian alternative. Green cities, understanding bioregionalism, permaculture, but the Democrats and the Republicans have better things to do than to save the planet. What we have to do now, since we've ignored this problem for 30 years, is integrate the solutions to the economy with solutions to the ecosystem. Because 70% of the planet is being used for humans right now. There's no more planet to use. In fact, we may have to even consider the whole concept of economic growth. Because economic growth has the same ideology as cancer. Unlimited, undifferentiated growth is good until the body is dead. And that's exactly where we're going. We have to change gears. I've been an organizer for my entire life. I've sacrificed career, money, property because I've been studying this and I've seen it and I've seen people suffering from it. Up where I live, I've seen Charles Hurwitz come in and take over the Pacific Lumber Company, a 100-year-old sustainable family company, and destroy the old growth forest ecosystem. They've shut down the mills. There is no Pacific Lumber Company. There's no old growth mills anymore because there's no more product. This is what's happening. 90% of the large fish stocks are gone. When are we going to address these things? Andy Caffrey, let me, let me interrupt. Thank you. I'd like again to remind everybody, this is a bill that you would sponsor. This is the priority for you. This is a kind of triage as far as you're concerned that would serve this district best and that would be realistically viable to get through this House of Representatives. Uh, can I go to you on this, Tiffany, Renee? Uh, Andy Caffrey, we just concluded the summit talks in South Africa and uh, the summit talks on climate change. And the real question continues to loom about how we get countries like India and China to go along. And what I mean by go along with, with essentially a program of serious reductions of greenhouse gases and uh, putting chlorofluorocarbons into the atmosphere. In other words, what should the U.S. role be in terms of other nations that feel that they are entitled now to pollute the atmosphere just as we did? We have to take responsibility for our historic contribution. It's not the greenhouse gases of India and China and the third world that's causing the problems that we're having right now. Greenland, West Antarctic ice sheet, they're melting. Half of Greenland is melting now, and it's because of our greenhouse gases, the greenhouse gases of Europe, the greenhouse gases of Japan and Australia. Once we take responsibility for that and say, we are going to do what we owe the rest of the world, even if it means our corporations are going to have to lose money in the fossil fuel sector, we have to do that. So setting an example is what we have to do first and foremost and pay our bill. Andy Caffrey, there are these savage budget cuts, of course, on the state and the federal level. Just talked about them on the air this morning, in fact. And uh, uh, Gene Ross, who is uh, in charge of the California Budget Project, said 
the population is growing and the amount of revenue is diminishing. Um, let me ask you, just from your perspective, how you would deal with that fact that you not only have to create jobs, but you have to do something about this economic engine, which doesn't seem to really be operating full throttle anymore. And you've got more of a population, and you've got more and more cuts. That's the reality. Yeah, but that's only one, act, one way of looking at reality. <clears throat> uh, I've been reading James Galbraith's book, The Predator State, recently, and he points out that the desire to cut deficits now is a disaster. Now, when a person's poor, that's not when they should be paying off their debts. That's when they should be getting support. You pay off your debts once you've gotten out of your bind, okay? We are going not only into a double dip recession, the economy is collapsing. We haven't had peak oil kick in yet, and we've done nothing to reduce our fossil fuel emissions regarding the climate crisis. Like I said, I've been following this issue and working on it for 30 years. Do you know who the first president was to pass a bill to deal with the climate crisis? President Obama. Let's not forget that it was Al Gore who was sent by Bill Clinton to Kyoto to gut the Kyoto Treaty. So what we have to do is have, as I've suggested, a national, um, well, I, I think President Obama has got to declare a national climate emergency. We have to rebuild our infrastructure. If you look at the two most important questions anybody should be asking right now is how much do we have to reduce our fossil fuel emissions and how much time do we have? I went through the Oakland firestorm. I lost everything, and that was because of the climate crisis. I know what too late is. Regarding health care, I got involved in working with the homeless four years ago because three people died, okay? Now, the state budgets that people like Assemblyman Huffman sign are killing the people in my town. They don't have dental care, they don't have glasses, and their mental health is cut. All of the money that we don't have in our community has been sucked over to the state. So what has to happen is we have to start designing how we meet our needs and come up with budgets for that. I propose something I call great conversion conferences where you and your community start to get together with the ecotopian visionaries, the climate crisis activists, the peak oil people, labor and agriculture. And you start to sit down and say, how can we get off of fossil fuels as fast as possible around here? How do we design our economy so we don't destroy the planet. Well, forgive me, Mr. Kevin. I'm going to have to come in here just in the interest of time, and I want to go to Stacey Lawson now, who has worked as a businesswoman. Oh. Let me take that point then, and, and we'll hear Thank you. From, from the uh, two who haven't uh, talked yet, uh, Dr. Caffrey, or Andy Caffrey and uh, Dr. Robert Courtney. Let's talk about um, f uh, public finan uh, political financing and so forth. Uh, Andy Caffrey, I'll go to you on this. Um, what would you envision should go on other than uh, the kinds of things we've been hearing about public statements and uh, recusing and so forth with respect to getting political funds once you're in Congress? I'm not sure I understand your question. Well, let me put it to you more directly. If you're, you're in Congress and you need to support your, con uh, your congressional um, staff, you need to get money from different sources, you want to run again, uh, I mean, there are all these things that contribute to taking money and have habitually and characteristically contributed to people in Congress taking money from the trough of all kinds of contributors. Where are you? Okay, well, <clears throat> thank you for that question. I'm inventing a new way of getting elected, and it's because we live in this district that it's possible. If you look at what's really going on and consider our plight, there are people in Congress who are running it all 41 senators, Republican senators, meet the diagnostic criteria for antisocial personality disorder, which is a kind of psychopathy, okay? So I'm going in there to fight these people. I'm going in with you. One of the things I'm going to do is after every day of Congress, I'm gonna whip out my camcorder and tell you what went on, who are the good guys, who are the bad guys, what legislation to be scared of and what to support, okay? There's a whole shift that has to happen here. Now, how could someone like me get elected? I'm what we used to call in the 60s a poor person, okay? Now, the way to do it is to reach as many people using the internet and our community networking to reach the people in our district as the corporatists can reach with their million dollars worth of TV commercials. That's the challenge. Can we do that? Well, yeah, I think we can. Starting with Howard Dean on through President Obama, the, the net roots community has become extraordinarily effective. 
So what I'm doing now is I'm working to invent a model that other people more famous than myself, and people like Jim Hightower or Winona LaDuke, Aaron Brockovich, that these people can then get elected in key districts too. So picture this, 10 or 20 Michael Moores, Amy Goodmans, and Andy Caffrey's on the floor of Congress four years from now. <laughs> Things will change. <clears throat> you know, I mean, five of the people here have said they want to fulfill the legacy and of either Lynn the, Woolsey or Mike Thompson. You kill the Occupy movement. That would kill the Occupy movement. That would just get rid of it, <laughs> exorcise it immediately. But let me move forward on that note because I want to hear from Andy Caffrey, who's going to conclude here. Of all the candidates here, I'm the only one who has lived and or worked in all six counties of the district. Uh, I consider some of the other candidates to be uh, tourist candidates, Highway 101 candidates, San Francisco Bay Area candidates. Right here, you guys have a median income of over 85,000, I'm sorry, median, yes, median income of over $85,000 a year. Where I live, it's 35,000. It's really different. I've been a part of the Occupy movement for over 25 years. I've been a tree sitter. In Earth First, we occupied Maxam property. We occupied the forest. And we are, have been occupying our, our uh, homeless areas for a long time, too. The homeless situation is something I've worked on for four years. Um, four years ago, we had three people die, including a couple of American Vietnam veterans, Vietnam War veterans. So I got involved out of scratch. I put my campaign aside for three months. And using KMUD, our uh, community radio station, calling up a show every Friday and telling folks what was going on with the homeless, I raised the money and we organized a homeless shelter for two months and we saved three people's lives. So when I go to the Occupy movement, I'm there with the, the people who've been there all along and saying, well, you know, how about some solidarity with us? You want us to help you guys, the middle class who've lost? Yeah, we're there with you. We've suffered too. We know exactly what you're going through and we're with you. But you guys have got to start looking at the bigger picture as well. And, you know, it's well and good to be an occupied tourist and drop in for a couple of hours for a, a photo shoot. But, um, you know, this is serious stuff. All of us have not been doing enough for the poorest of the poor in this country, the least among us. And it's time that we use this Occupy to do two things. I think the next stage is we have to build solidarity. Okay, the middle class who have lost their homes, they should start to help out the poor who have lost their homes and build their solidarity. You asked about the, the Oakland um, the, the occupation. In general, I would support that. But I heard a little comment this morning as I was getting ready to drive down here that um, there were some problems with the union. The union wasn't very happy with that. I think it's very important for Occupy to work with the unions. Okay, so solidarity is the next place where we have to go, and the next place after that is where people like me start to get elected. People that we respect as community leaders of our own, not people who have made careers as politicians, not business people, not lawyers, not the richest of our community, but the people who have always been there, the people that we go to when we need help. Andy, That's just what let me, uh, we need to do. Let me, let me uh, thank you. Uh, bring it to a stop here because I want to go through a number of questions. I also want to clarify a point because we did a program on this with a spokesperson for the ILWU, the main union for longshoremen, and there was a lot of dissension over how many rank and file members were out there as opposed to how much the union was actually in condemnation. You're talking about the trucker union as well as the ILWU, but anyway, that's just uh, an important footnote that I felt compelled to add. Now what I'm compelled to add is just questions that have come, and let's do this, let's do a kind of, um, We'll, go, we'll start with you, Susan, go to Norm, then we'll start with Norman and go down to you uh, with questions from all of you. And I'll ask you to be precise and be succinct, about two minutes, answer the questions. It's kind of a lottery. You'll get a question here from someone in the audience that'll have to do with presumably important matters. In fact, I've looked through these cards and they all are important matters, and they're important matters, important enough that the people wrote them down. <laughs> all right, let's, let's, let's keep that pithiness here as best we can, and uh, <laughs> we're going to you next, uh, Robert Caffrey. Uh, Member of the audience writes, education is any country's largest role. Uh, actually, quoting Tiffany Renee. Um, but the question is phrased as follows. How can we better provide more education? And what can we do about the uh, education system here? There is no legislation. There's new legislation here in California which negatively impacts education uh, under the budgetary rules asking specifically about California to enhance education here, and certainly something that's very important to most of, if not all of us. How specific a 
What question are you asking? Well, I, I'm, I'm reading it off of the card here. Let me reframe it. What would you do in terms of priorities where education is concerned? Okay, well, again, part of this whole overall war effort to convert involves an expanded social safety net. I think America can have the best schools in the world, and that should be our priority. You know, there are a couple of things that are used to keep us on the hook. When I went to college, I had to pay 200 and some odd dollars a quarter. Now people are paying tens of thousands of dollars to go to college. Why? Because they'll be happy servants for a corporation for 30 years afterward. Same thing with mortgages, okay? I think it's insane that we are paying for health care in the wage stream. It makes all of the workers have to compete to accept the least amount of health support and all of the workers to try to get the cheapest thing they can get. We need to pull it out of there. Likewise with property taxes and schools. Why is it that Watts has crappy schools and Beverly Hills has wonderful schools? Because Beverly Hills has a lot more to put in there. We need to fund this nationally. We need to have a national education initiative because that is the heart of our future. Thank you. Uh, final two questions, uh, Andy Caffrey to you. Would you join with Alan Grayson to repeal the likely oncoming indefinite detention part of the new DOD, that is Department of Defense, provision bill? I didn't hear the first party question. Would you agree, well, I just agree or disagree with the idea of indefinite detention, repealing indefinite detention? I'm completely opposed to that. No, I mean, that's all I have to say. Okay, that's good. Uh, and uh, Susan Adams, I guess appropriately enough, we're going to con let saying. me conclude on that note. Um, and let me say that I think, um, well, a couple of things. Uh, first of all, I want to again extend thanks to those who sponsored. I actually got through virtually every question that was submitted, so that should make, uh, I hope, those people who submitted the questions happy. Uh, what makes me very pleased is the fact that I think that you all and you're obviously concerned citizens in being here have had a good picture of these candidates where they stand on many of the issues. Now it's up to you to exercise your franchise, which I hope you will do with intelligence and illumination. Let me thank all the candidates and thank all of you as well. Thank you.